Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to... Hello. A one hen, two ducks. The podcast. A theater kids podcast. A, theater, a, a grown-up theater, grown theater kids podcast. Yes. Welcome back, grown-up theater kids. Yes, welcome back. And fellow theater kids. Fellow theater kids. Grown-up theater grown kids. Grown-up theater kids. And seasoned theater kids. Seasoned theater kids. We're all theater kids, deep down. Truly. Yes. Somewhere I down agree. there. Somewhere. Today's we got episode. the theater kid, theater kid down in our heart. Where? Sorry. <laughs> I liked it. I went for it. I will, Yes. 100%. Yes. What are we talking about today? We have actually a really cool thing that we're talking about today. It is Bridgerton, the TikTok mm. musical. The TikTok musical. So if you guys don't know, if you're not in the know, if you're not cool and hip like us, I mean, we just became <laughs> hip and cool. Um, but if you don't know. I had to put so... eye cream on and you're saying cool and hip like us. And I'm like, before I came on, I'm like, eye cream, eye cream, the bags. I mean, we're getting, <laughs> we, ha we're, we have to backtrack. We, we're, we're, we're putting on our cool clothes, you know, our cool outfits. So that we can stay in the know and see what's trending. Um, so if you also watched one of our earlier episodes or listened to our earlier episodes, you know that we just did a review on the TikTok Ratatouille musical, right? So apparently, following the success of that one, a new one is budding and emerging in the TikTok world. Bridgerton. Bridgerton. The TikTok musical. The TikTok musical. Based on Bridgerton, the series from Netflix, a Shondaland produced series. Of course. Uh, which was a book series that apparently Shonda rhymes. Again, one of these moments where she went on vacation and didn't bring enough reading material and stumbled upon the books and started reading them. And it was like, this would be the series. This is a series. This is a I mean, series. everyone just, I think the theme is everyone just needs to go on more vacations. That's the theme. Because that's see, when we see, get the best content. Hamilton, Bridgerton. Government. Government. The, the, the vacations, vacations are important. Vacations are important. For all yes. of us. <laughs> I, agree. Uh, I agree. We have our producer, Kristen, here with us again today. Hi, Kristen. Hi. She's also a I Bridgerton think, fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Bridgerton, so I couldn't <laughs> miss this one. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm <That's> so excited. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. So um, the musical version of the, the TikTok musical version of Bridgerton just began. When we say it's budding, it literally is, it's not even showing its little white part. It's, it's barely coming out of the little, the little, little, um, little plant. white part. <laughs> the budding, you know, whenever a plant buds, they show their little, uh, it's like a little white leaf. Oh, the little white, like stuff before it opens. So it's still a little greeny. Yeah, it's very green. Um, very because good. she just um, posted, like, like what if literally was, a month ago? Like, no, like barely a month ago. It was January 11th. January 11th Dang. is when she posted, what if, what if Bridgerton was a musical? And with that post, she posted a song. Um, and her name is Abigail Barlow is her name. And, and her um, cohort, cohort, Emily Bear, who wrote the music, um, Abigail Barlow, who is... Uh, like a singer songwriter and Emily Bear, who's uh, a pianist and um, composer. They work together, they make songs together, and came up with this and, and threw it out there and it stuck to the wall, baby. Um, so, if you haven't listened to the first song that she started the musical with, here it is. This is what you call a honeymoon, pacing around our separate rooms, running from our elaborate rooms. We're doomed, please forgive me your grace Can't even look me in the face And now I must lie in the mess you made The mess we made it was your mistake You kissed me in the I was face. prepared to take my life I that stole day. your fate I stole your fate I stole no, your fate I stole your fate I don't understand Now you're forced to love a man you hate Sign me I know you don't feel the same, but I burn for you. You burn for me. I burn. I burn. I burn. I burn. I burn for you. So, 
Ratatouille, the TikTok musical, has proved that somehow the TikTok musical setting has worked. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just for just for entertainment purposes, uh, obviously getting it onto a stage would be a whole different (laughs) bag of tricks. Whole different thing. (laughs) <laughs> um, but in terms of a TikTok musical, so far, Bridgerton, I mean, it, people people are obsessed with Bridgerton in pop mm-hmm. culture. It's one of Netflix's biggest shows right now. Yeah. So it's something that people are totally obsessed with and TikTok is obsessed with, social media is obsessed with. Mm-hmm. So it's working in terms of popularity. Um, what do you think? Because obviously Ratatouille was a movie. Bridgerton Mm -hmm. is eight episodes, at least, I think, for 45 minutes to an hour long. Long pieces of of bits here. So how do you feel about, like, how are we going to cut this musical down? How are we going to cut? How are we going to streamline the story to make Mm -hmm. it fit into a TikTok 90 minute tops kind of keep people interested setting? Well, well, the one thing first I wanted to address your your comment about how, you know, Ratatouille is giving creative something to do or like the TikTok musical generation is giving creative something to do, especially during the pandemic when everything shut down and we can't have theater. Um, and it reminds me of um, our Art Unmasked series. You should go check it out of, you know, art finds a way. Art always finds a way. And this is one of the ways that art is finding. Um, but yes, to address your other question, um, I think that you're that the only way to make Bridgerton work as a like you said a ninety minute, maybe maybe if you want to like chime in with Hamilton the Lame is maybe two hours at the very very max. Uh, musical is uh, you have to be very specific. Yeah, you gotta you gotta narrow this story down, narrow it all down to a specific story. I would say, and and um, if we even want to take it from the books. Q, um, the, the, the first book is, I believe, about just Daphne. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we want to start it from there, I think what the musical should be is narrow all those stories down and only focus on Daphne's story. And honestly, the only way to move it forward is, is to only include things from the show that forward her story. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have anything to do with her story, really, it might have to be sacrificed for musical sake. Right. So one thing that I always teach young producers is that we can get so attached to our story and we can get so attached to how things are set and how we see it in our heads. And sometimes we just have to let things go. So I agree, Selena, in order to move it forward, I feel like you'd have to cut out, like, say, the brother's storylines. You'd have to cut out Anthony's storyline. You'd have to cut out Col- – or maybe not Colin. You'd have to cut out – what's Penelope, the brother's <laughs> You, you might have to, well, yeah, or at least shorten Penelope and Eloise to a, to a great, maybe you can introduce them, but they're, but specifically those two don't have much to do with Daphne's story alone. Um, and so those are going to be, have to be sacrificed, but this is what musical theater is. I mean, we, we talked about in our Hamilton episode um, that uh, even, even Lin-Manuel Miranda had to narrow his story down. He could have, I mean, Alexander Hamilton had way more to his story than what could fit in the musical. So you have to be very specific. And, 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 and here's to me the biggest part. What is the goal? What are you trying to say in this musical? This was a real, because even Ratatouille, even a little rat had something to say. Meaning like everyone has a purpose in life and everyone can reach their purposes and their dreams. So what are you trying to say through Daphne's story? It has to be more than just, oh, love. It yeah. ha- like, it has to be something deeper than that if it's going to be successful as a musical. Right. And it doesn't have to necessarily just be from Daphne's perspective. Like, it can be, like, Daphne and Simon and just the juxtaposition of the way, like, because they kind yes. of touched on that in the Netflix show of ju- the juxtaposition of how they grew up. Like, here mm-hmm. is a girl surrounded by so much family and so connected to her whole family. And here's mm-hmm. a boy who has never had that connection but always wanted it. Yeah. And yet stops himself from having that connection. You know what yeah. I mean? So then so then they find a way to come together and fall in love. Mm-hmm. Um, also, an interesting thing that I just thought about just now was, I mean, technically – I mean, Bridgerton's going to have a season two as far as we know. That's as far as they've announced. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's eight books. Um, 
but there's I think one for the, each child, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. there's only yeah. ever been one sequel musical, and that is Love Never Dies, the sequel to Phantom of the Opera, which didn't do so well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sequels don't really do well on Broadway because it's that's true. It's very hard to do a musical that everyone has seen so then they'll understand the sequel so like if you were to then write a bridgerton season two musical about antony's storyline and yet we had to streamline the storyline there no before I like think, it's not gonna i think it goes back to Kristen's where you're gonna have to let let it go it's whatever you pick for the storyline of this musical is just gonna be the musical you we can't keep it going in a sense it has to right. it has to whatever this musical ha- is going to be has to kind of encompass but then still be specific but then encompass what the books were trying to say uh mm-hmm. what what's important um in all the books and and then and then that can that's all it can be it can't it can't keep going on forever because you're right there aren't any sequels there aren't any things that it's just the story and that's what it is now you can because i just thought of this um for example, Les Mis had a streamline baseline story. They had all these other stories, but they did have, it was technically Javert's story and then who he meets, it kind of branched out from there. I'm mean, Not Javert, I'm sorry, Jean Valjean. <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it was Jean Valjean's story and then, and then the, all the other stories branched out from there. But it wasn't like we went deep into everything, but we did, we got enough. We got enough of the Tenardiers, we got enough of Javert, we got enough of Cosette, we got enough of the revolution, but mm-hmm. but not not to where it distracted from Jean Valjean's story. So yeah. that's the that's the I guess the possibility that we can do with Bridgerton is if we streamline Daphne and and Simon's story and yes touch on those ones that that branch out from them, but only again if it forged the story. Because even if we think about Les Mis, all of those 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 side stories forwarded his story. Right. You know, so like the reason okay. why the Tenardier, we got a little touch of Tenardier is because he got Cosette from Tenardier. The reason why, you know, like, and then the, the whole, and, and, um, and, and Fontaine is because he was working as the mayor. So it was continually still fun. The, the reason why he was in the revolution is to save, you know, um, Cosette's boyfriend. And, you know, like, so, so it was, it was still streamed line and, and, and forced his for- story forward. Yeah, And so um, that's going to be definitely necessary if this wants to see success. And that's why you don't necessarily have to cut out fan favorite characters like Penelope and Eloise, because you could still incorporate them, but not necessarily in the giant way that they are in the series because you're doing it over eight episodes. So yeah, right. like you can, and that's where the writing really comes in because if you only have 10 minutes to care about someone... You better make that there 10 minutes is. count. You know there what I mean? Is. If you're going to really like, and, and then at the end, like you better make sure that even, even if it's a baby arc, that there is an arc there that you care about. You yes. know what I mean? And that's important yes. because I feel like because a lot of times it's had, like. Exactly. There's only what, a couple of songs with Eponine and a couple of moments, but you fell in love with Eponine. Mm-hmm. When she died, yes. you were still crying, even though she was barely in the story. Yeah. Uh, you fell in love with with uh, with little Gavroche because he was so cute. But you know, you fell in love with these people that that nor like if in a very short moment we got to know right. and understand and and care like you said care about. And speaking of writing, so one thing I've noticed about the Bridgerton musical so far, again, it just started. It's just budding. It's green. I understand. But what I'm starting to notice uh, is that there isn't any writing in, in it, when, it, when it comes to storyline. There are songs, but the songs aren't connecting. Right. And, and to, to make this a musical, a musical has to have a story. It has to have a narrative. It can't just be a bunch of songs thrown together. Even if we're talking about Les Mis, Hamilton, Phantom of the Opera, that are all songs, they're still connected to the story. There's a storyline. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, I feel like what I'm hearing from the Bridgerton musical on TikTok um, is just going in a circle. It's just going in a circle, and it's not moving forward. And, and, and I always like to say, what, what happens when everything goes in a circle? It starts to <laughs> go down the drain. Yeah. Um, and, and to save it, 
is you have to start to stretch it out. You have to make it move, have a destination. You have to have a clear beginning and a clear end. Um, and, and I get that we get excited about just wanting to bust out some songs. Oh, this could be Penelope song. This could be so-and-so song. This could be so-and-so song. But we also got to keep in mind what's the end goal specifically. Right. What are we, what are, what is it? What are we trying to obtain? Um, or else it's just going to all be a showcase. Yeah. So one thing I would definitely like to see more of just in my observations, I'd like to see more songs with characters interacting with each other. Cause I feel like that's kind of what I'm missing. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of like solo, like deep feeling like this is my inner soul song that I'm singing. But like, and you know, I know obviously it's a more complicated to do with TikTok and with social distancing, but like once you start like melding characters together and having more duets and trios or whatever it's going to take, I think that will help quite a bit. Oh yeah. yes. Yes. And it is, it is hard in TikTok where you have just 60 seconds to kind of set that up. But you know what I mean? Like if, if for example, because now the spotlight has shifted to Abigail and Emily, as the kind of writers of this musical, then I think it, it, it sucks, but then a responsibility has shifted as well. As like, mm -hmm. okay, like now you have to think outside of just one character or two characters. Now it's like, if we're at a ball and we're doing a ball sequence and we're trying to introduce all these different characters coming to the ball, what is each group theme? So like example, all the Bridgertons come in and say because Antony is the more dominant Bridgerton mm -hmm. when he's at a ball with his sister, it becomes all about him and his theme. Whereas like her theme might come out musically, her theme might come out to try to talk to the guys or whatever, but he mm -hmm. squashes it with, with his theme yeah. constantly. Mm -hmm. And then the Featheringtons, they all come in and say they're all like, they're all the same theme and but then it's like Penelope tries to kind of have her moment with Colin, but and Colin and whatever Colin's theme yes, ends up being yes. Colin and Penelope somehow interact really well. You know what I mean? And yeah. same thing with like with Simon. Obviously, we know Simon and Daphne's theme kind of already with the the champagne song, um, or Ocean Away, something like mm -hmm. something like that. Like they always meld together super well with Burn. You know what I mean? Like their mm -hmm. riffs counter mm -hmm. each other. Um, they harmonize well with each other. Like those themes can kind of, they, but then, but, and then you have like Lady Danbury and sometimes you have the queen, sometimes you have Prince Friedrich, you know what I mean? So you have all these other character themes that could, you could bring into a ball, but you just have to orchestrate it correctly. And then yes. you have to put out little bits on TikTok of like little 15, 30 60 second clips of like each of theme like here are all these people coming in on the ball you know, I, and wait wait do you see what we have in store you know what i mean yes whenever you're talking about that i'm sorry i am a big hamilton fan so you're gonna hear a lot of references but i couldn't help but to think of that moment when okay he first meets bird that was great but then he walks into the bar and he introduces everybody and in that moment just that one part of that song you got to know who they were what they were about and why you should care you know, you you knew that Hercules Mulligan like like was a cool dude who loved pants, but he wanted to do more. I mean, he was he was a tailor's son who wanted to do more. You knew about Lawrence who 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 wanted to, who had this huge goal of of wanting to end slavery. All was like you said within fifteen seconds. But you got to yeah. but there was a moment where they all met. You got to introduce the main characters all at where they were interacting in a natural way, and everyone was introduced. And it, and, and it was great. And I think that's exactly what's needed. And I think a ball, I can already see that song and it seems so exciting. Like having this moment where it's just da -da -da -da, like little moments of, of all these characters being introduced and you getting to know them in those 15 seconds so quickly. Um, but It'd that be very is- very much a, a callback to West Side Story of the dance at the gym, yes! right? You have like the Bridgertons and the Featheringtons and the, and the Royals and whatever, and they're all kind of interacting, but then it's like, slow motion Daphne and Simon and they can't see anybody else but each other from across That's, the room. Yes. You know what exactly. I mean? And then exactly. And then the way you do it, because with like you have maybe like three or three ball scenes, say, like the the first the first scene is like really just all gals, right? All the mm -hmm. gals and maybe Antony and whatever. And, you know, going to meet the queen. And then you have like the first major ball where Antony doesn't let her talk to anyone where she first meets Simon. And then you have the second ball where they decide they're going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. And then you have like 
maybe two other balls. You could have them like short balls, but small balls. <laughs> two short, two small balls. <laughs> Oops. We're grown ups. Um, we're grown ups. We're grown ups. We're grown ups. <laughs> two small balls, people. The dances. Yeah, mm-hmm. you used to have these balls that that then because the the storyline is focused on Simon and Daphne, the balls are where you get the other storylines that you mm-hmm. don't get to flesh out throughout the yeah. the, the musical. So you get yeah. the Penelope and Colin storyline, you get the Eloise storyline. Granted, mm-hmm. Eloise is not supposed to be at the ball because she doesn't she doesn't care, but we're gonna but put her fine. in there anyway because we care yeah. about Eloise as we mm-hmm. want her to be there. You know what I mean? She's gonna yeah. be in the background like I don't care, give me some food. I don't right. Right. But she needs to be there. Yeah, I, I agree. Bowl. But but yeah, something that, that moves it along. And also what I'm also really hoping to see that I haven't seen yet um, with the with the new musical is diversity in the songs. Because right mm-hmm. now they're all ballads and they're all the same, kind of. They all kind of sound the same. They all feel the same. Like you said, they're all gut-wrenching, blah, blah. This is who I am in my inner life. And and I think we need to lighten it up a little. This is a musical after all. Yeah. This is a musical. Even Les Mis had some lightness. We have to we have to lighten it up a little bit. And 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 in, and the biggest thing about Bridgerton, not only is it an amazing book, not only is it an amazing show, but it's a shocker when it comes to diversity. It it shocked people like exponentially because this is crazy. Like a black duke uh, getting with a white chick, like in the in the fifteen. A black like, queen. A black queen. What the a black heck queen? is happening? You know. So diversity, I think, is key to the music's to the musicals um, or to the story to the story's foundation, and mm-hmm. that has to show in the music. And I think um, that's even why. Sorry, I know, but that's even why Hamilton included different types of music. With even though it was rap, he still had his ballads. He still had all these different things because they were trying to push diversity, trying to push like this is something completely new, even though we're mixing old. And I think Bridgerton is doing that same thing of, hey, we're mixing new with with old, but it, the, the music has to reflect that. So we yeah. got to have we got to have some upbeat numbers. We got to maybe include some rap. Why not try a Simon rap? That would be fun. Yeah. Try Simon rapping with Daphne's ballad. Just try it. See what happens. Mm-hmm. Try, try more of a a, a, a different or style. Maybe he's to him. like, may, yeah, maybe he's jazz, baby. Yeah, maybe jazz or R and B. Maybe he's or... like unpredictable and like yes, all over. You know, what? maybe he riffs. Oh. Maybe he scats. You know what I mean? I like that. I like that he's all yes. over the place because that's kind of him. I like that he yeah. would come over here and then he'd be like quick song and then a quick moment, the slow moment, and then all of like kind of his music is all over the place. Try yeah. to think of that. I think is is go deeper into who these characters are, not just what they say and what they do, but who they are, and make the songs out of that. Because another yeah. thing that I'm seeing is is right now Daphne seems a little shallow. I'm not seeing. Well. I mean, she is. I mean, she kind of is shallow. I feel like she's more. That's I think, Daphne, Selena. I she, but no, I don't think she's just shallow for shallow's sake, though. I think she's shallow because she's been sheltered, and that's why you, I think that villager part with with the whole um, her making that mistake was such a big deal because I think she realizes, wait, the world is a lot bigger than what I thought it was. There's a lot of more complications in this world. What people, people can't survive without killing pigs. Like, yeah. I, you know, the, this it's, is, it's not always about though. making everyone happy and making everyone like satisfied in the room. It's about like, sometimes you have to make a decision, even though it hurts someone's feelings, you have to do it. And she was raised to be someone who never spoke out of turn and never did anything wrong and always perfect. And so the thought of hurting someone's feelings or, you know, doing something wrong is like, well, I'll just always do the right thing. But then the right thing ends up being the wrong thing. It's an important lesson for her to learn. It's true. And you can tell that she was so green in that moment, especially with the lines that followed after she was trying to give out those baskets and no one was taking the baskets. And I always laugh because when she looks at her, her lady and she's like, um, could it be that I wore the right? The, I, could it be that I'm wearing the wrong dress? I'm like, boo. Yeah. I mean, that's how green she is. That's how she yeah. doesn't understand oh. that it's that the world is so much deeper than what dress you're wearing. <laughs> These people don't care about what dress you're wearing. You took away their livelihood. <laughs> 
That's why it was such an important for a year. Yeah, Yeah. that's why it was such an important moment for her to even, you know, getting into kind of the more risque scenes where the fact that her mother never talked to her about what to expect on her wedding night in terms of what physical contact was like. And how to make a baby. And And how how to make a baby. Like, yeah, there's there's that's such a a grown up moment for her to have that even in the series, I feel like they didn't quite. Yeah. Go far enough with it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Like from C from episode six, I think it was from episode six to eight. She went through an explosive amount of eye openings, an yeah. explosive amount because up before then she was still in that sheltered little bubble where everything is perfect and everything doesn't go wrong and everything. And then also a relationship. She expected her relationship to just be like her perfect parents relationship. She didn't understand. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand this, but um, uh, most of us here are married or getting married. Know that relationships are not easy. They're not the fairy tale. We've been lied to. Been and lied um, to. they're work. <laughs> they uh. are work. And now the, and her, and her, and her parents were so, sheltering that they even hid the work from them because even i and i think the show did, didn't do that much justice either even i believed that even though they must have had a great relationship but every relationship still has struggles and still has hard times i don't care how right. in love you are um so uh she yeah that was an explosive moment so i would like to see that in the in the musical i would like to see more of this awakening from daphne not just mm-hmm. her so when i go on tiktok and i look up the bridgerton musical i'm seeing a lot of stuff from abigail and emily all of their songs which are great like they're obviously like working really really hard on this i'm seeing a lot of other people Mm -hmm. either like replying to their songs or singing their own songs and then abigail and emily saying Mm -hmm. like yay that's great so are they actually taking submissions to do a collaboration or is it their own musical? Because what was so great about Ratatouille is because it was a collaboration with so many artists. And that's what I would love to right. see, hopefully. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, um, I don't think they are. I think I think they're um, not I don't I don't think they're collaborating with anybody else. I think that they are their own thing. And I don't know if that is their own choice or if that's a Netflix or Bridgerton choice that they just don't want to open it up to have multiple artists there, but it doesn't, it seems like they're sharing some people to like show them off, but not to collaborate. Yeah. And, and when they show them off, it's just them singing the songs that they've already written. There's very few that, that, that say like, it's like either an addition to a song that they were working on and they couldn't figure it out. And then someone did had a, had um, lyrics or something to put in there. They might share that, but it's still ultimately their song. So that's the only kind of collaboration I've seen is when it's, they've already started a song and they're seeking someone to finish it or add something else to it. But, um, but I, I do kind of worry about that because if, to me, if you're going to put this on TikTok, which is a social media super thing, right? And if and 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 also following the example of Ratatouille, then it kind of has to be a collaboration. That's the reason why Ratatouille was so successful. It wasn't just like um um the 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 young lady who began it, you know, with um with the rat of all my dreams. It wasn't like her just going, okay, I'm only gonna write this by myself, and and that's it. She people were just jumping in with different mm-hmm. songs to add to it. And that's why it became so not only so successful, but also so special and so historic in a way for for musical theater. This was fan based and it was it was created by multiple people and it was a complete collaboration. So I think that that if we if they really, truly want to see a successful TikTok musical, they're going to have to open it up. Um, Otherwise, otherwise, if they do just want to do it their own thing, that's cool then just make it clear that you guys are doing your own thing and and um, and then maybe only post what you're doing that way. But but I would say to make it clear if you're only making it your own thing or else it seems, dare I say, rude at this point to not include anybody else or not to even consider anybody else. It, it seems quite off-putting if we're following the example of Ratatouille. So yeah. it would just be nice to be clear in that, like clear in what you're that's what the goals are or whatever. If you're looking at this. this as 100% like we're going to put this on 
in like two months um, on Zoom, then, you know, bringing in other people, it's like you have to because that that opens up that realm of creativity for so many people. Like what would Ratatouille the TikTok musical have been without Kevin Chamberlain's just jumping in a song Gusteau moment everyone and, can cook and in and, and the the um Colette. Luigi and Colette like what would that have been without that tango that was so perfect it's because mm-hmm. you open it up to so many different things you open up the realm of possibility with it yes however if they if they're like really gunning for like we're gonna make this a stage musical and we're gonna aim for it in the future mm-hmm. then okay I can see having the two writers you know what right. I mean but um, I just, I don't know, I, like, I know that they've said like, oh, Netflix has reached out to us or Bridgerton, Shondaland, whatever. Someone's reached out to them to like discuss kind of making this a thing, but because mm-hmm. we don't know what their end goal is, we can't know what right. the outcome would be. So if it was just a stage show, it makes sense that it would be just yeah, them. I agree. Or if it, or if it was just a showcase, maybe it was just a, like yeah. a, a songs put together that 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 um accentuate the 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 thing then that's cool too if it was just a showcase but not an actual musical Mm -hmm. i can understand that as well um but if we're trying to make it similar to tiktok then it's gonna need to be a little bit more open yeah you could 100 percent make this a uh just a a concert version a concert version so much easier and it's just a bridge or two would be easier you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, one hundred percent. Then you don't have to think of anything else. You just hire a couple people to duet or trio or whatever with you, and mm-hmm. then, and that's it. And then you release, and that might be smart for them because, like right. Abigail and and Emily, because they are writers of their own songs. Like right. they are songwriters. So mm-hmm. for them to just make like a really cool concert version. That and then, like, better. Skype in, Zoom in people to sing with her that would be at the better. piano and or show parts of the movie behind them, parts of the mm-hmm. series behind them. That That's would be cool. very cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. Can someone get Netflix on the phone? I'm full <laughs> of ideas tonight. I'm full right. of and ideas. That would, that would be better. Then they don't have to think of because... Again, it, the word musical has has standards and it has and it, it has needs. So it it has to be very specific to story. It has to be very specific to like you were saying, um, you know, uh, putting all these into one, all that kind of stuff. Um, so a concert might better fit Bridgerton than a musical. Yes. Hashtag okay. Bridgerton the concert. Hashtag Bridgerton the concert. Sorry. We should start charging for consulting fees on this. All right. So I have a logistics thought. Yes. Slash question. Yes. Okay. So obviously I can't even call it the elephant in the room. Everybody knows and loves Bridgerton because it's so sexy. Right. And it's not even just like episode five and beyond. It's before that. It's like the little touches. It's the glances. It's all those little moments that build up. So how does that get accomplished through a TikTok musical? What are your thoughts on that? On Zoom, it does not. It does not get accomplished. So therefore, I think the story has to reflect something else other than... I know like the show on Netflix, maybe even the books, are very steamy. But you have to find other things in terms of Zoom to make it more intriguing for people to stay when there is no touch, when there is no... Mm-hmm. you know sex scene yeah <laughs> like there's not gonna be that on a zoom no no i mean you could you could if you're a creative editor and a creative shot like if you construct your shots in a way you can make it look like you're doing something like if you do a close up of a hand no not not, not like sex not sex but like <laughs> but i mean like the little hand touches <laughs> like for example you can get you can get your phone and you can and you can just record like a little moment with your hand and then his hand and then and then like you can put the the, the images together for a moment like as it and then put a little shink or something you know where you can edit and creative do it like that or like the looks like he looked like the close up on the eyes and then close up on his eyes and a close up on her lips and a close up on his lips and so but then how do you do that without making it being silly 
That's what I'm saying. When it comes to a, like a Zoom, I because it's you, gonna be because silly. it's going to be actors in their house filming themselves. You know what I mean? Like, so how do you not make it <laughs> no, so you, silly? You, how do you not you. make it as silly as Ratatouille, I, where people are going to sit there yeah, and laugh and enjoy exactly. it? Exactly. I agree with you that that it does have to that that. that she has to have a story outside of Simon alone. Um, and that's why I was big on, on making it about her, making it about her journey, making about all that, because it can't just be about love. Cause like you said, we can't do the intimacy. We can't do all that. And it does have to be entertaining. It's, I mean, love alone is boring. Yes. I didn't know what to say, but love it. But, but you can only do so much. <laughs> <laughs> and then after a while we're like okay what else is there like can we have can we have something say we got all that say now we have a story now we have a goal now we have a destination now it's moving it's shaking it's doing great things who megan would you cast girl are you ready for this oh yes i'm so ready <laughs> i'm so i'm here for this all right so as the duke the duke would be jelani alani from he was in the original cast of Frozen, he was Kristoff, and he was also Hercules recently. Oh, he okay. is one hundred percent Duke material. Jelani, I've got look, look, look him up. I'll look him up. Look him up. This guy up. I'm gonna start crying. He's. Fantastic. I love this man and his voice. I love this man this, and this his is, voice. He's my Duke. Who's your Duke? Do you have a Duke? I don't have anyone actually. Should we move on to Daphne? I've got Daphne's yes. too. Yes. All right. So for my Daphne's, I have three different Daphne's because I don't know which one I would want. Mm -hmm. I have Ava Noblezato. <laughs> Ava Noblezato. She was uh, in the revival of Miss Saigon. She was also in Hades Town. Sick voice. Mm. Sick voice. Mm. Um, so mm. I have her as one of my Daphne's. I have Samantha Polly, who's in Six. Mm -hmm. um, she was also in Evita at the West End. Nice. She has a beautiful voice, mm -hmm. beautiful lady. Um, I think she'd be great. And then the other other person who really kind of looks more like Daphne from the, like, so Ava is um, Asian American, I believe. She's mm -hmm. uh, like Filipina. And then we have Samantha Polly, who I think is Latinx. And then we have Laura Lee Turner. She was in Mean Girls. Okay. She she looks more like a traditional Daphne from Netflix. Lady Danbury. Because I figured Lady Danbury is going to be kind of more of a cameo part. Like she's going to mm -hmm. come in for like two songs. Mm -hmm. She's going to come in as like, I'm Lady Danbury. Yes. And then she's going to come in as like a, maybe like a um, a montage of like, how she kind of was there with Simon and now mm -hmm. Simon's older. Yeah, yeah. And then her kind of at the end of it telling older Simon, you got to get over this shit. You got to get right? over it. Yeah. Audra McDonald. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. Yes. Sold. I know. She's great. I like my it. queen. My queen is Felicia Rashad. Now, I do like of the songs that they do have in Bridgerton right now. I do like the Die to Me. Yes. Song that yes. that was written. I actually yes. don't know who wrote that one. Spinning rock prods. Spinning rock prods. That's a great song. <laughs> Spinning rock prods. Yes. Is I guess the one that wrote. This is crazy to me, because they also have only thirty-two followers. It's crazy. How and is that, that song possible? is amazing. That it's one incredible. needs to be yeah. included. I don't, I, that one I yes. was like sold on right when I heard on. I was like, oh my gosh. Moving right along, yes. Anthony Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. And I told you before, I feel like Anthony should be included only because he's so very controlling at the beginning and he's so very hypocritical of the way he expects his sister to act, but yet he does the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. um, and But fair. then he's there to like challenge the Duke and stuff. Anthony Bridgerton. I've got, I've got three people for this. I've got Zachary Levi. I have Max von Essen. And then I also have Jeremy Jordan. I didn't really cast anybody, but a few people, but I just pictured one that just because yes. of her face would be amazing, even though she's not black, but she'd be an amazing yes. queen. Cause it just dawned on me. She like her face just ran across my head. Meryl Streep just sitting there with her. <laughs> Her little, her purse, her her her, her, li her lips pursed. You, Do you know who you I think Meryl Streep would actually be? Do you know who I think she would actually be badass as? Featherton. 
Yes. <laughs> the mom, mom feather. I was going to say the exact same thing. Badass I mom have her Featherington. as the mom. I love how I don't know what her name is. <laughs> She's mom Featherington. mom Featherington. So Meryl, I need you to jump on TikTok and do that Just for, for a cameo. Just, Just for, for a cameo. cameo. If Kevin Chamberlain can do it, you guys were in prom together. Penelope Featherington, yes. I kept as the TikTok girl, yes. Gwen Laurel. Yes. Because she's fantastic. And her voice is she insane. She was so cute. So Gwen Laurel, you were doing a fantastic job. You, Your voice, you're just Penelope. That's, that's all there is to it. So good. You are Penelope. You are. You're already cast. I'm not even directing this, but you're cast. I don't care. Listen, you're cast. <laughs> and we're not only just saying this because she also looks like Penelope, but her whenever she was singing the song she was singing, which is right here, there was prim, there was proper, never a whim, never an offer from a Bridgerton. Colin, he'll never see behind the yellow that covers me. I'm just an afterthought. So I keep it all in. It's like I'm invisible in my own skin. Give up on my fiction. Whenever she was singing that song, I felt it. Like she, she brought that. She was giving me what I've been looking for on the other songs. She was giving me that deeper, not just about what it's saying and doing, but that she was giving me the deeper part of Penelope, just in the way she was singing it. All right, I have three more. I have three more people. Yes. My okay. Eloises. Yeah. Who is your Eloises? My Eloises. I have Brittany Mack. She's another six lady. My other person was Krista Rodriguez, who played Meg in the Hercules at the Delacorte. Mm. Colin, Anthony Keegan Bolger. He was also in Newsies. He played Crutchy. Can I suggest a Marina? Yes. Oh, please. I was just about to talk about Marina. So I thought of Ariana oh, yeah. DeBose. Yeah. So we saw her in Hamilton. She's the bullet. And yeah. we just saw her in the prom yes, as Alyssa. Mm -hmm. So I think she has a beautiful, engaging voice. And she's, she's captivating to watch. So even though I'm not entirely sure that this musical needs Marina, just, if we keep saying. Marina. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> if we keep Marina, this would be my choice to play her. That's good. Because I was just about to say, I have only the people that we would probably toss out of the musical. Which one would be Marina? Because... Just because her story has nothing to do with Daphne and it's, yeah. it would take it all the way somewhere that we don't want to go. Um, so I was like, we probably will have to cut Marina and we probably have to cut Mr. Featherington to a certain extent. Like he maybe just be there, but not really a person because his story there, because that would take them into the whole gambling and yeah. the whole, it's not anything to do like with Like you Daphne. just hear at the ball that he gambles Exactly. Like he, yeah. he's not necessary. There's, you know, there's quite a few people that would probably have to say bye-bye-bye. I, I think you could have Marina for a little bit. If we're going, if we're going to have a little bit of like Lady Featherington as the narrator of the TikTok musical. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So I, I think if this were an actual show on Broadway, you would have, you could, Bring in Marina. As a TikTok thing, you don't need her. This is true. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At, like as a Zoom performance, you don't need Marina. As a Broadway performance, you would need Marina. Yes. Only because you would need to have that dynamic of what pushes Penelope over the edge to almost reveal herself as Lady Whistledown. You know what I mean? But then but what does that have yet. to do with Daphne's story? Because I was gonna make the argument that maybe, maybe we can we can keep her in there because they do. Daphne and her have that moment where Daphne sees her, truly sees mm -hmm. her, not as some floozy trying to trap her brother, but as a woman trying to make it in the world. And remember, she had this all this eye-opening stuff of a woman's got to do what a woman's got to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, she saw Marina for the first time, going, "Oh." She's like me, but in a different situation. She's a woman that's trying to do what she's got to do. And so maybe you can keep her in that sense. You accelerate her storyline a little mm -hmm. bit and really trim it. If you can, again, get a couple things across in a few balls. Mm -hmm. Every time she's at a ball, she's like more panicked about being pregnant. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And. But again, then that then just means that the story has to be more than just love 
and Daphne and Simon. It has to be. It's a coming of age story in a sense. Is that for both of them in their life though? It's a, I'm coming out of the childhood. I'm coming out of my gal. I'm, I'm coming into real of the life. Fear. Yes. Yeah. I'm coming out of that whole thing of my past and I'm coming into, I'm stepping into my life and my future and what I really want my, my time on earth basically mm -hmm. to be. Um, um, yeah. And I'm presenting myself not who I was said to be, not who I was raised to be, but I'm presenting myself to the world. Being honest with who you are. Cause like Simon, you know, he, he thinks he needs to be a certain way because he's made this vow and he's hold on to these grudges. But when he actually lets someone see all that, mm -hmm. see all that messiness and they love him anyway, that's such a big moment for him as a character and a big moment for people to see a man to go through. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it tells, and it tells her, it, it rounds up her story perfectly because she, before that, before that moment, she was trying to find the perfect love. Everything has to be perfect. He has to be perfect. He has to do everything perfect, everything. And then she realizes that these are humans and that humans aren't perfect. And is she going to love, does love have to be perfect? And she just, she answered that when she looked at him and said, I love you anyway. And love do isn't perfect. Yeah. Love doesn't have to be perfect. That love doesn't have to be with a little cute, pretty bow on top of it. It's, it's messy. It's ugly it's sometimes scary it's disappointing it's frustrating yet it's almost inescapable and it's and it's passionate and it's beautiful and it's amazing at the same time it's all those things all wrapped into one it's not just cookie cutter that she yeah expected it's not it like be. we mm -hmm. fall in love at a ball and it's uh, and it's, uh. like it's not always sexy sex scenes and dancing no it's, it's him sitting Ariana on Grande. the armchair picking it's... his nose and farting <laughs> that's love <laughs> that's love and loving him anyway and loving him anyway it's him not putting the seat down that's love <laughs> it's bringing him food for 14 days straight because he's got covid and stuck in a room <laughs> That's love. That's, That's love. That's love. It's it's him throwing his 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 dirty clothes right in front of the hamper instead of in the hamper. Yes. That's love. Folks, thank you so much for joining us again. Please head to our Patreon at patreon.com backslash one hen, where you can be one of our patrons and uh, get some cool merch get some backstage stories, get some behind the scenes episodes, have us call you out, get a shout out in one of our shout podcast out. episodes. Just help, help, help a podcast out. Help me help you. Help, help me help you. I don't know why I would be helping you. Also, help also Selena. Yes. They can definitely also, to show your support, big, big, small thing, hit that like and subscribe. It's a small gesture to show us you care. Ring the bell, people, so you get <laughs> notifications on when we yes. post stuff. Or else we can- Like us just, on social media. Yes, like us on all our social medias. We're practically everywhere. So just find everywhere. us and like everywhere. us and follow us. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, Kristen. Bye, Selena. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.